welcome to this week's Facebook Live. It's the last Facebook Live of this year, of 2022. Um, thank you all so much for joining me throughout the year, watching in replay and supporting me. Um, so we're going to talk about um, finding a balance. Now this this blog or um, this video is really about reflection. Okay, so heads up. This is about reflection. Um, it's about taking a step back and looking at what do I really want? What do I want? What's, you know, what's going on here? What am I focusing on? Because, you know, it is coming up to that time of the year, a new year. A couple of weeks, it's going to be new year. And, you know, we make resolutions, but most of the time we fail at them. Um, and some of us may decide, ah, oh, why will I bother? Um, you know, maybe it's just a bad idea for me. Um, but particularly if you're stressed, um, you know, you're feeling overwhelmed in your life, it usually means that you're out of alignment and that you do need to rebalance again. And by taking some time at this and not just grabbing for, you know, reacting and trying to fix something that way in a reactive way, is if we can just stop and slow down for a second. And usually, you know, over the Christmas period to New Year, we have some time where we can do that. Um, so maybe now is the time to get out the diary or, you know, even get out, you know, your laptop or whatever and, you know, sit down and answer a few questions and do do a little bit of reflection on different areas of your life. Because when you do that, when you do take that time out, when you do take time to reflect and ask yourself questions, that's when, you know, you can feel more in control of your life again. Um, and when you're, you know, when you're feeling stressed, you're going to start, as I said, focusing on the wrong things um, and then you can't see the right solutions for you so it is all about asking yourself the question am I focusing on the right things in my life the right things for me so that's the question I ask you now all these questions that I have I'm going to suggest and they are only suggestions um, is um, they're in the blog so I'll place a link to it in the description below as always so you know you can go and check those out um so if we can start with a bit of reflection i do you know say to you you know you can have a look at different areas of your life over the last 12 months but you you can take it at your own pace um you know, pick one area at a time maybe decide on you know which area you want to prioritize because you know again you could ask yourself the question if i don't prioritize this particular area of my life how is that impacting the other areas of my life so for example if you don't make health your own health a priority it knocks on it has a knock-on effect, uh, effect on your um you know your relationships your work life your home life everything else is knocked on because you're not making your health a priority because you become sick then maybe you lose your job um god you know hopefully that won't happen but again maybe that's where you need to prioritize your time is you know making sure you're attending the doctor making sure you're getting your dentist appointments in there making sure you're getting checked out so that health goal would be your goal for 2023 um so i'm just going to give you some suggestions of areas and some questions that you might like to ask you don't have to do them all you can pick one think about it though that's the whole point of today is think about it think about you know what area can i focus on that would help me with the rest of my life, the rest of the areas of my life. So the first one up is physical and mental health. Um, we are holistic beings. You know, you can't just take care of physical health but not look at your mental health. You can't just look at mental health and not look at physical health because they all impact one another. So uh, the idea in this area, you would be looking at, um, you know, exercise, food, alcohol smoking if you do smoke doctor's visit dentist visits stress if you're stressed your sleep level your me time you need me time you need time off you're just for you um you know sex medications uh, if you're perimenopause menopausal maybe you need hrt you need to be looking at everything here um so you know what is going on this is the question what is going on in this area of physical and mental health for you so the questions are in the blog so you don't have to write them down um so are you you know visiting the doctor as you need to and or on a regular basis if you are taking medication De dentist are you doing your regular checkups at your dentist 
Um, are all your medications still working properly for you? Or do you need to go back to the doctor? Um, what about your exercise, your food? Um, do you need to make some changes? Can, I've talked about this before, how you know these can make a big impact on our not just our physical health, but our mental health. Little tweaks, you know, swapping out, uh, you know, some water in for instead of your tea. Yes, I have my tea today because I'm pretty cold here in Ireland. Um, you know, are you taking some time out just for yourself? Are you getting that break from everybody else? Some time just to pursue a hobby or an interest just for you. Maybe some time for your own spirituality or just personal alone time. Just shut the world away for five minutes even. Um, what about your stress levels or your anxiety levels? Are you concerned about, you know, depression? Um, have you, you know, looked at how you're talking to yourself, how you speak up here, how are you speaking to yourself? Um, what about, I talked about uh, values la last week, I think it was, you know, what about your core beliefs and your values? Are they out of line with your current life? Are you feeling off center because of that? Again, reminder, big reminder, your mental health and your physical health are so interlinked. So you have to look after both together. So the question, the big question here is, you know, what is the top priority here that if you could change it, even a little tweak, if you could little tiny tweaks, you could make that tweak that could that make a big difference for you in your life? So that would be the question you'd be looking at there. Family relationships. Again, family members. We want to look at all our family members. Um, you know, even even the ones that are maybe that are dead. Um, that maybe we need to take some time to reflect on that. Have we allowed ourselves to grieve? Even if it happened a number of years ago, sometimes we don't allow ourselves to grieve at the time for a variety of reasons. Um, so you know, but family members, if they are still alive, how do they treat you? Are they positive people to be around? Could you rely on them in an emergency? Or even at any other time of the year? Or is it a one way street where they're always relying on you? Um, you know, are there past issues that you still haven't let go of? Um, they're unresolved. If they are, then they're having a negative impact on your current life, your current relationships. Um, you know, so even if this person again, if even if this person has passed away, um then you know in order to move forward you may need to deal with this um what about adult sibling rivalry i know we talk about children and sibling rivalry there but adult sibling rivalry is a big issue for an awful lot of people is it still going on um you know are there arguments with with other family members not with you but you're getting dragged into their conflict um you know are there elderly people in your family that need more support perhaps you're the one that's been left to deal with it and you have reached a point where no i can't do this all anymore i do need the help of other people or perhaps it's time for you to be honest with yourself and say no i need professional support here um you know so think about all aspects of family relationships um and you know how they could be adding to what's going on in your life, how they can be impacting your other, you know, your intimate relationship, maybe your, your relationship with your own children, um, your stress levels, they could be impacting your work. So how is this impacting you? How is it unbalancing your life? So again, the question is, what is the top priority here? That if you changed it, even a small way, it would make a big difference for you in your life. The next area would be, you know, if you do have a partner in your life. Um, so there's a number of things we have to review here. If there is, if the, if there's an issue, um, you know, how are you communicating with one another? Even if there isn't an issue with your partner, you know, a little reflection. Sometimes we can be, we can slip in and be a little complacent with our relationship with our other half. So how are you communicating with one another? Are you being open and honest with one another? Or are you hiding stuff? Um, you know, are you being disrespectful? Um, and again, we love to dish on the other person, but we have to be honest and look at ourselves and our role that we play in this. So are we taking the other person for granted? Do we feel we're being taken for granted? 
Um, are we more arguing more than we did in the past? Why? What's the main issue there? What's the underlying issue that's driving that? Um, are there past issues from other relationships that are impacting this current relationship with your partner? Again, you have to take a big dollop of honesty here and admit that you have a problem. It could be you have the problem, not the relationship. So you, you might need to reach out for professional help on this one. It doesn't mean that the relationship is at an end, um, but it does mean that you both have to work on it because this is, you know, the relationship needs both people to work on it for in order for it to continue. Um, and that will build a stronger relationship in the end if you're both willing to put in the work. So again, I would stress, ask for help sooner rather than later for yourself and maybe as a couple for couples therapy. Don't forget gratitude on this one. It's, I talked about taking the other person for granted. So, you know, some gratitude. Thank you. I really appreciate everything you do for me. Little, little, little things that we can just say that can make a huge difference to the other person. And it can alter the relationship. It's a, it's often a, a, you know, a simple one, a simple technique that we can communicate with gratitude um, to the other person. And but we overlook it. We overlook using it. We don't use it again. The question, the question throughout all this is what is the top priority here in this area that if I could change it, even in the small way, would make a difference in my life? So that's what you're looking at. Um, friends. Now, so we've gone from family, your partner, friendships um, could include friends that you're also work colleagues with in this um, casual friends, maybe um, as well. But, you know, so all types of friendships that you have in your life, not just your best friend. Um, so, you know, is, is everybody, every person that's in your life um, a real friend? Are they a real friend? And that's the that's the the key word there is real, you know, or are they only there because, you know, the lower they can put you down to raise themselves up, uh, you know, the ones where when it's a compliment, not a compliment, when it's actually an insult, um, you know, you know, they only meet up with you when it suits them. So look at, you know, are they supporting you? Are they positive for you? Um, you know, do they bring out the worst in you or your behavior? Um, are they undermining you or gossiping about you? They can be undermining you to your face, as I said, when it's a compliment, not a compliment. Or are they gossiping about you behind your back? Um, you know, are you putting up with unsupportive behavior here in these these friendships? Um, so you know, what are you getting out of it as well? So we have to be honest again here is. What do we get out of having these kind of friends in our lives? What role or need are they fulfilling for us when they behave that way? Maybe they're repeating um, a past relationship relationship you had. Um, you know, so again, look at your friendships, all of them, and see if this is an issue for you, if it's causing you so much stress, this this area. And again, what would be the top priority here that if you changed it, you could it would make a difference in your life. Maybe you, you need to let somebody go. And the question then is, can you let them go? Why not? If you can't, you know, are they fulfilling this need that you have there? Um, home life or home, your actual physical home in this sense um, would be, you know, do, do you feel safe within your home? That's the first vital question you need to ask yourself. Um, and if not, this would need to be rectified. And it's not just about physical safety here, but, you know, you're talking about, um, unfortunately, we have renting crisis. We have rent going up. Um, do you have a home? Uh, one that you actually call your own or you couch, you know, you couch surfing, as they call it. Um, you know, what about financial pressures? There are financial pressures now from mortgages. Again, cost of living has gone up so much. And this is you know, causing you to be stressed is causing many people to be stressed. You're not alone there. So again, there are organizations that can help you with this in Ireland. Um, in Ireland, you would have to look at somewhere um, in your locality if you're outside of Ireland. But MABS is a very good organization um, for for dealing with, um, uh, you know, your rights and entitlements around your home, 
um, repossessions and um, if you have any other debts as well. So please do look them out, look them up. Um, the other thing would be clutter, major clutter. You know, if you've, if you've clutter in your home, I've talked about clutter before and how it affects our mental and physical health. Um, you know, but has it has it built up? Are there home repairs that need to be done and you've been putting them off? So maybe even getting that list out of your head, you, it's nagging you, it can nag you, you know, it's there, oh, I have to get that done, oh, I have to get this done. It can be just nagging you, so it builds up little micro stressors that build up in our head. But if you make a list, it's kind of, yep, I know I have to do it, it's there, it's on the list, I, can, I don't have to, it's not nagging me anymore, it doesn't have to do that. You can put that list down and then decide what you're going to prioritise. Um, and take it slowly, just take it slowly, you can do house repairs, um you know when or save up to get somebody in um so again your home your physical safety maybe you need a security system um you know maybe for other reasons of course domestic violence if you are suffering domestic violence safety first as always safety plan but please reach out to uh women's aid um men's aid please reach out to these organizations they are there and they will support you so you know please reach out refuge in england is another one uh, in the uk sorry would be another one you can reach out to so please you know do check out my two videos on domestic violence and it's all the links there in the blog so do check them out and 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 have a look at them if domestic violence is an issue um you know are you dealing with addiction again if you're dealing with addictions of any kind within your home this can make you feel unsafe so please, again, there are plenty of organisations that can help you. I've talked about a number of those, um, a number of addictions and the organisations that can help you, um, not just your loved one. So again, please reach out for pro professional support there. Um, so again, main question, what is your top priority here? What do you need to do, even in a small way, to change this area of your life? Um, children. Um, children and you know parenting and believe me I know this uh, I raised five kids um, I have two grandkids I'm raising those as well it, it's it's tough okay it is a tough role um, and you know it's an area that if you have a partner you shouldn't be doing it alone don't feel you're doing it alone particularly if you have um, a dad or a mum there to support you they're in it together so if you are going to work on this area and you do have a partner then i would advise you that you work on this together if there is a problem in this area with the kids that you feel something needs to change then this is something you should do as a couple okay um so one thing to consider um when teens and children can be acting up is that if other areas in your life are off balance if there's a problem in work if you're stressed because of that they can act up as a result so you might have to do fix simultaneously or you might have to um, look at that area first before you can tackle the kids okay so look at all areas if, if there's a, a problem with an elderly relative or something like and that they'll be picking up on your stresses and your anxiety so they're going to be maybe acting up and things can feel off balance for them too so do have a look at that um, and also to remember pick the battles um, with regards to behavior I've done um, a number of videos on children's mental health and um, uh, children and teens and what's normal behavior and what isn't there's a lot of information up there uh, questions you can ask in more detail so do go check those videos and blogs out but, you know, pick your battle when it comes to behavioural changes. So, you know, what what would you be looking at? What, what what do you want to change? What do you want them to do? But also remember, this is about you, your behaviour. You have to look at your own behaviour. So what are you modelling for your children? Um, you know, have your kids gotten older? And if so, do the rules, the house rules, as I call them, do they need to be revisited? Because they do. Or do you need to get them more involved? Um, and what would be, you know, fairer um, rules for them as kids? They can come up with some pretty um, uh, good 
um, deterrence for themselves. In fact, kids and teens in particular are very good at doing that. Um, have structures or routines changed recently? That can knock them off balance. Sorry, I'll just take a cup of tea here. The other thing I would look at is not just within the home, but also outside the home. Um, outside influences um, and don't just look at the usual activity the usual uh, suspects sorry uh, of friends um, but look at family members um, perhaps look at family members of friends um, if there's something going on in, in a friend's household that you don't know about but the kids are picking up on it then you know you need to, you need to look at these things um, diet exercise sleep routine all can knock a child off balance so again we have to look at these things um you know be honest with yourself are you giving them enough um time just listening to them it doesn't have to be activities that you pay money for are you just sitting down with them getting involved in what they're doing or what they're interested in and just sitting and listening and encouraging that doesn't take an awful lot of time either to do that um bedtime um you know just before bed or anything like that or around the dinner table can be a good time to just listen and encourage them uh to and you'll find a lot the drive home from school i always found was a great time to get information um from my children um you know i, I do recognize that families are so busy and we don't have an awful lot of time these days but perhaps even maybe it's time to review where you're spending your time and energy particularly if you've got children um you know because if we can get get rid of the the time wasters so we're reviewing our friendships there um our family that's time wasting um or have us running ragged for them then you know if we can move away from those negative vampires well then we'll have more time for our kids so have a look at your priorities here as well in work and at home where are you spending the time and energy and usually we can claw back some time for the kids more time for the kids so again what is the top priority here what could be one small change that you make that would have a huge impact on um you know on this area of your life but also has a knock-on effect on the rest of um the area and the and the last one i'm going to talk about there's, there's other areas you can look at you know spirituality um you know just think about it uh what what areas are in your life and have a look at it but the last one i'll talk about is career and colleagues um because they can have such a huge impact on our lives um there could be a variety now it could be your partner's career it could be your partner's colleague that's causing the problems in 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 your life because it does impact your relationship with them and you know if it's your colleagues and your career then it can it'll impact everything else in your life um so review your relationship with your colleagues again hugely it can be hugely stressful um in your personal life so we have to look at that so what are your colleagues like are they positive or negative is there a lot of gossip is there a lot of backbiting um, is it a toxic environment or a supportive environment you're working for? What is your manager, your line manager? Um, you know, what are what are they like? Are they negative or positive? Um, so what are their, the pros and cons there? Are you putting up with something? Um, are you actually still enjoying the job you're doing? You We can feel off balance when we come to a shift in saying, I don't really want to do this job anymore, but we don't want to admit it. We don't want to admit that we don't want to stay in this career anymore. It's time for a career change. So, you know, that's a question you can ask yourself. You know, what would I rather be doing instead? Where would I rather be spending my time? I still have to be practical. I still have a mortgage pay. Maybe I'm still raising kids. You have to be practical. But at the same time, if you're completely miserable, it's having a knock-on effect with your relationships, with your children and your partner. It's not worth it, maybe. Um... You know, so can you take any steps even on a part time basis for uh, training or steps towards another career? If you want to do change your career, um, you know, what about your children and your career? This is another two things that go together. You know, is your job having a positive or negative impact 
on your children if you're not seeing them uh, during the week um, or maybe you're working every weekend or you're working nights what how is that affecting the relationship with your children but also your partner your family members your friends what's going on so how much time do you spend working you know are you sus becoming um suspicious that you might be becoming an, a workaholic um or are family members saying you're a workaholic are you taking phone calls constantly at home even after the end of the day um you know how is it impacting your life so again if there was a priority here that you could make just one small change what would it be um you know the the questions that I've, I've posed are only just suggestions okay um you may think of other ones as you go through that particular area for yourself take your time um and try not to allow procrastination or perfectionism to get in the way and you pro you know you probably will um but to walk away from it if that's happening and then come back to it delegate some time specific time 10 minutes that's all i'm going to do today and then 10 minutes tomorrow you're better to do that than try and hit it all one go get this fixed that's not a good attitude to have um because you're actually not taking the time to reflect you're better off um writing a little bit down and then going away and doing something else and then coming back it allows your brain to to relax and reflect and while you're doing something else you may think of something else and um, that's more proactive um, of an action step that you can take um, your next step then would be to make to, to pick out your priority in the area that of your life that you wish to change and to actually write out some proactive steps that you can take actionable measurable steps that you can actually take to rebalance your life but if you don't take the time to reflect to slow down to look at the areas and say okay which one is the is the real one that's causing me the problem here um I'm, i need to prioritize that then you will be just constantly putting out fires you'll you you will continue to to feel off balance and overwhelmed so have a think about it that that's all i ever ask for ask of people is to is to think about it um, so that's it for today and um, I will be back in the new year so I'd like to wish everybody a happy holidays and enjoy your time with your family um, and um, I will talk to you all then thank you all as always for watching live and for those that uh, watch and replay thank you very much and I'll see you in the new year